As Greg mentioned in the pregame, Big Vaughn, <laughs> New Mexico State, 7-1 and one in WAC, CSU Bakersfield, 6-2, and two, and the Aggies in the Merlot, Roadrunners in all white. Going with Merlot, are you? Yeah, looking forward to it. Runners will start it off. Man to man for the Aggies. Durham across the top, over to Lee. We know Lee will take it. A little bit long, and rebound Aggies. Runners also man to man. Clayton Henry starts off with point guard duties. Henry is not a score first point guard out there. Bobbitt strong move to the hole, tries to float it down. How about this? Already James Suber takes the charge. Icardo crowd loves it. One thing we'd uh, like to see is he tried to dish that one off. He was in no man's land there. Suber stepping in. One thing to keep an eye on tonight, will the Roadrunners go to the foul line? And will they go more often than New Mexico State? That has not been a, an occurrence most of the season. Part of that due to the structure of their offense. They're a jump shooting team. Suber over to Durham. Damian getting the start tonight. Edler Davis left wide open, bad pass. And here comes Jones. Jones lays it up in and off the glass. Inexplicable error. Yeah, A.J. Harris with that skill and lay-in. The guy who did not play in the first game. Edler Davis threw that ball almost like it was just an automatic pass without even looking. Not a wise pass at all. Durham pulls the first one, doesn't get it to go rebound. Some tough man-to-man -to -man defense by the Aggies thus far. Chua. Oh, you're right, that was A.J. Harris with the layup. Henry left wide open. And he does start with a score, and Rod Barnes has called a very, very quick timeout. A.J. Harris with a steal and layup, and then, as you mentioned, someone that's not going to be called on to Averages beat. four points a game. He's got three. A big score outside Clayton Henry, and just like that, a 5-0 start in front of a crowd that's still on their feet, Greg. You know, they don't sit down until the runners score, and uh, they're still on their feet, and it's going to be for another minute at least. Well, you know, last game the runners jumped out to an 8-0 lead on Grand Canyon, and that didn't turn out so well. So maybe they could turn the tables here. A little bit of a slow start. Looking to rebound. They've Tajay got more in for, uh, for Edler Davis. Thank you. Tajay Moore in, and that's a good sign from the standpoint that he's healthy enough to play. I would really, again, I know I sort of beat a dead horse on this. Jarkel Joyner with his vertical game with a much smaller guard on him. I would put Jarkel Joyner in the low post and spread things out. And make Harris play defense down low. Because they're comfortable out top. Tajay Moore tries to go up high. Suber in the area with him. Suber comes in. A lot of contact. No call. Suber gets his own shot. Does it go in? It does. And they're going to need more of that interior play. They did not have much of it all against Grand Canyon, which is to be expected. The length Grand Canyon has. Great defense by the Roadrunner on the baseline. And it looks like it does go off Henry, and it will be Roadrunner basketball. Henry's saying it went off Tajay Moore. And Coach Jan's not wasting any time making no, himself no, home here. No, no, no. Long tenure at Wichita State. Joiner trying to initiate the offense himself. Has that big There vertical. he is. He's, he's got the size advantage. And if he can get it down low, work it down there. But he's starting from the perimeter. Tajay for three. That's way long. long. But it went off an Aggie. Let's see if they see it. No, they say yeah. it went off of a roadrunner. It'll be New Mexico State basketball. Early goings here, 5-2. I would really try to work this team inside out. But pull the big men out and put the, put the guards down low. I would try to work them inside out. Got some size difference down there. Tajay, who can jump. Jarkel's bigger than Harris. For the Aggies, Chewy and Bob at both stand 6-7. Tallest guys on the floor tonight. Pass from the Aggies. Oh, they say it went off of the road runner, deflected by Suber. I don't know that it touched anyone. They changed the call there. Well, he pointed at number right. four. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see it right here. That did not go off anybody. And, I mean, and, nobody. And, no, and Henry's hey. back in the game. 
McCants into the ball game for New Mexico State. Johnny McCants. Johnny McCants, the guy who made the shot from beyond half court to defeat Grand Canyon at the buzzer. Grand Canyon's only loss in the whack. Joyner sees Suber wide open, nothing there. Durham's gonna try to get some space. Damian comes up, stops, floats one in. Oh, rattles in and out, doesn't go, Chua rebound. Here come the Aggies down the far side. Brown thought about it for a second. Coach Jan sparks out motion offense. Harris. Ooh, close to a five. A lot of movement there by the Aggies. And yeah! another offensive another foul. And this one's taken by Tajay Moore. Coach James obviously doesn't like it. I think it's a really good call. Absolutely. Absolutely a charge. So two off. Not a bad foul. call as a charge. I could have also seen it as a no call. I could have gone no call. Jojo. Wasn't a block. Right, right, right. Jojo Zamora comes into the ball game. He'll guard Durham. And anybody in the Western region knows that Damian Durham is a three-point assassin, the all-time whack leader. So whoever guards him is going to be busy. This is from there. A lot more hustle from New Mexico State for that ball, but it rolls off of them. And Coach Barnes a little frustrated with Greg Lee. And I think he's going to go with Ricky Holden. No, Ricky Holden coming in. I think he's trying to get some infusion of offense with Durham starting. Holden only had like three points last game against Grand Canyon. 5-2, 16-20 to go here in this first half. We're just underway in Bakersfield. Holden floats it into Tajane Moore. Wow, sure was. Suber and Lee in the low post. Holden at the elbow, over to Greg Lee. Thought about it for a second, back over to Jarkel. Joiner pulls up, stops, long on that. A little too much energy. Big, big rebound. Boy, that long Runner's arm cold from the up. outside. I really think when you're cold from the outside like that, you really got to get the ball down low and just get some touches and maybe get to the free throw line. Henry for another three. Man, if he'd have had two threes in the first six minutes, Greg, Runner's already would be in trouble. Yeah, an wow. offensive rebound for the Aggies that... Lee picks up a foul. We have our first media timeout. 15:46 remains here in the first half. Five to two. New Mexico State over the Roadrunners. We'll be back right after this. Johnny McCann's at the line for the Aggies. Misses the first of two. Again, five to two. We're almost five minutes into this game. Roadrunners have been ice cold from the outside. McCants makes the second, and it's a four-point Aggies lead at 6-2, and they apply some full-court pressure here. Harris in the backcourt working against Ricky Holden as Holden brings it across the half-court line. Aggies in that man-to-man -man defense. And turnover here by the runners, but they get it right back. They try to bring it out. That's going to be a foul, it looks like, on JoJo Zamora. Great coach Barnes livid right now. Two really poor pass attempts one was picked off for a layup the other luckily the road runners got it back but well that just shows him a lack of focus and empty possessions are just the worst thing a coach can see as damian durham has it near wing again great man-to-man -man pressure here by the aggies as the runners again trying to get it inside they finally do but they lose it down low and here come the Aggies. And yet another turnover by the runners. And Zamora bringing it across to the top of the key. Pops from the top. That's going to be off the rim. Rebound goes off the runners. It looks like it's going to be Aggie ball. Darren Person Jr. in for the road runners. Had some bright moments earlier this season. Not a lot of minutes in the last couple games. But maybe get a refused a little bit. Aggies will take it out from under the bucket. They just get it back out top to Chua. Gives it over to McCants. McCants' range is from beyond half court. We saw that against Grand Canyon. Working against the man-to-man -man defense. Henry over to Harris. 
Chua looking around, kicks it over to Zamora for a wide open three. In and out, rebound goes down to Joyner. Who almost loses his feet there. Joyner bringing it across and the runner's offense trying to solve this Aggies defense. Greg Zamora was wide. And Joyner going right to the hole and putting it in. No foul, but it gets the bucket. Harder two points for Jarkel Joyner. It's now six to four. Quarter three for the Aggies, goes in and out. Rebound to Chua, who loses it. Scramble on the floor. Runners get it, the save, and it comes down to Holden. Great hustle by the Roadrunners. Super slow to get up, but he is up. Ricky Holden pulls it out. That was a wild sequence there. And the Runners, after a couple of defensive rebounding opportunities that did not go so well, showing some great hustle there. Holden to Durham, top of the key, Joyner, who had an open three for a moment, got a defender in the air, but chose not to shoot. Tough shot selection, but that was against the shot clock. Person Jr. had to put it up. And here come the Aggies and subs ready to come in. Three for New Mexico State, one for the runners. Six to four in this game is almost seven minutes old. Shot clock down to two. Oh, goodness. And they score right at the end of the shot clock. A breakdown after 30 sec 29 seconds of great defense. With a lay-in for Chua, and now it's an eight to four lead. Seven minutes, four points for the runners. They're going to clear the starting five for New Mexico State. They got four subs getting ready to come oh, in. Oh, goodness. Holden the ball bounces it off his foot. And now we're going to get a tie up here. That possession is going to go to the Yankees. Yet another turnover. Rod Barnes is just pacing. Oh, goodness. Well, great coming in for New Mexico State is how about Terrell Brown? Yeah. <laughs> coming off the bench for him. And you look at. All of their key statistics, 19 points a game. Oh, we had 19 against Chicago State. 12 points a game, three rebounds, two assists, and he's coming off the bench. The Roadrunners bringing in McNeil, Heather Davis back in. Once again, the Aggies with the ball and pretty much a fresh set of players in right now, except for the Ants who remain in the game. Sean Buchanan with the ball. Mohamed Chum, Down to three on the shot clock. Another wide open jumper. Knocked down by uh, Mohamed Chum. Chum, and it is 10 to 5. Aggies on top. And Coach Jans is upset with Chum because he was on the line. Runners again, very extended, extended out by that Aggies defense. Pretty good call. That's going to go against Edler Davis, it looks like. Oh, my goodness. Battling inside. And we're just under the 12-minute mark where we're going to get a timeout right here for the Icardo Center in Bakersfield, California. Slow start for CSU Bakersfield as the Aggies in the Mexico State lead it 10-4. We'll be right back. All right, Welcome back, everybody. Vance Palm, Greg Kerr. 10 to 4 in a whack shootout here in uh, Bakersfield. And there's an offensive foul called against the Roadrunners just a second ago, right before the media timeout. So it has been perplexing to say the least. Runners Boy. shooting all of 20%, man. Boy. Ajay Moore, Lee, Edward Davis, Durham, and Neal into the Roadrunners. McCants. Taking the ball around the corner. Chom has it. Kicks it back right over here to Queen. Queen floats one in and just misses the teardrop. And McCants also in there. Durham stops. Wants to go up. Floats one up with the right hand. Tough angle they're just from not the right baseline. Looks. I mean, that, that was not a bad shot, but they're not getting really good looks at this moment. Certainly a quick look, Greg. Oh, how about this? Strong move by Johnny McCants. 
and the 6'7", 225 pounder. And what you saw there, nice bucket, but it's the entry pass by Queen that was the difference. And that's what the runners have to establish, I think. They have to get the entry pass down in the low box and start forcing the Aggies to play defense down there. Super back in for the Roadrunners. There's a look at McCants, as Greg said, the dagger against Grand Canyon. Misses that. The ball slapped away. And it's going to remain in New Mexico State's possession. And I just see this trend right now of the Roadrunners just not taking, well, I'm not the only one to see it. Everyone's seeing it, that we're not taking care of the ball. Justin McCall coming in mm, boy. to the game. They need some energy. They need some energy. Ball giving up some size to McCants there, but we know he can jump. Now Super's on him. Sean Buchanan picks up his dribble with McCants there. Long, McCants is long. How about this? Queen pump fakes coming to the baseline. Ten footer doesn't go. Looks for a foul. Won't get that another, again. Another offensive rebound. Coach Jans barking out his order. One simple word, move. Long three, no good. And there's that energy that Greg talked about. McCall went up big time to grab that. You know, Vance, you cannot fault their defense, which is another turnover. We don't have time to talk about the offense. Yeah, they keep turning it over. They rarely have the ball. But the defense I want to talk about, and I'll try not to interrupt your play-by-play -play on this, but... <laughs> And the whistle, and the whistle, the bucket counts. And it's going to be on James Suber, 14 to four, 10 point lead, follow your thought. Well, the runners have not played bad defense. They Twice they've been beat at the last second of a shot clock. A Couple times have been on putbacks after missed shots. So the defense, for the most part, has been very good. It's been breakdowns after the shot, and in two cases, breakdowns in the final second of the shot clock. You take away those eight points, we're talking like, you know, hey, it's a six, six to four game right now. Chom from Degar, Senegal, knocks it in. 11 point lead with just over 10 minutes to go here in this first half. New Mexico State quieting this Icardo Center crowd. Speaking of defense, the Aggies have been spectacular. Suber down low, nice feed. That's exactly what they need is to get it down low to Suber. Ball stripped. And he's got to finish. By Chong. And they're collapsing, you got to get it back out to the... Foul down low, and Coach Jan sees everything that he likes, and then on top of that, he's putting Eli Chua in, so... And that's going to be Edler Davis' second foul. Boy, Chua oh boy. Getting ready to come back in. 9.48 remains here in this first half. Under 10 minutes to go, and the Roadrunners have four points, Greg. Right. Now, I don't know if you noticed last week, New Mexico, uh, excuse me, San Diego, uh, let me get it right, North Carolina State scored 24 points in the entire game in a loss last week. 24. Let's hope the runners aren't on track for that. Treville and Queen on the line. Made the first. When you are struggling offensively like the runners are right now, this 12-point lead feels more like 20. You got to get going offensively. And you get tempted to put shots up because you want to put something on the board. Jarkel Joyner contested deeply. And rebound by Buchanan. Trying to get the ball down low. They have a size mismatch, and they found it. But a miss from point-blank range by Chua. Uh, Chua may have gotten away with a travel there. But. Jarkel, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Joyner. So number one took one from number zero, and Jarkel Joyner was going full speed Take ahead. Look at it right here. And, well, he certainly took a blow there, but I... Uh, that's a tough I, call. Hey, I don't that's why play, they get paid to make the call. I don't want to play in your rec league. You would run me over and say, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm just saying. I thought he was still moving side to side. I see the great Kerr train coming. I'm out of the way. <laughs> no, great defense. Don't get me wrong. Shua down low. Feeds it. Wow. The tough runners shot. can't maintain a rebound. They're battling themselves for rebounds, and it's just, they can't grasp it. Buchanan. 
Back over to Chua, throws out to the corner. A wide open Chum comes up short. Offensive board and the putback by Chua is good. 8.42 and counting here in this first half. Greg leaves him to go back in and this CSU Bakersfield crowd here in the Icardo Center is stunned. Holden can't get it to go. Rebound Chua. They're going to keep feeding this momentum right here and keep attacking. They feed down to Chua just too easy. Just too easy. Fortunately for the Roadrunners, he missed. Another an offensive, offensive rebound. rebound. And a big foul by Suber on Queen. They're being out hustled. They're being out hustled. The energy of the Aggies is all over the floor. The coaches feeling so effervescent for New Mexico State that the official had to come over and tell Coach Jans, hey, just have all your crew sit down with a smile on his face. Coach Jans said happily, happily. We're just fired up. They're up 14 on the road. Yeah. Queen on the line and uh, Bobbitt about to come in and take his place. Oh, excuse me. It wasn't for the shooter. Henry's going to come in for the shooter. So John comes out with some big high fives from his crew. Good minutes by John. Looking to capitalize, strokes it in. 8-17 remains here in this first half. And you're seeing it, and it really is a 20-4 game here so far. I don't think he could have uh, scripted a worse start. Two for Super, two for Joyner, and nothing else. And a full court press as well. And they have to take a timeout. 17 seconds before the eight-minute timeout, which is really frustrating as well. I believe they're going to stretch this into a full. They are. And we'll get out. 8.17 remains here in the first half. It is all Aggie so far here in Bakersfield. Back in a minute. Good look, and I'm looking at scoring. Welcome back, everybody. Vance Palm alongside Greg Kerr. For those of you that might not know in the New Mexico market. Greg is a local sports broadcaster, been here for over 30 years. He's a Hall of Famer, has his own radio show, and he is the dean of local sports, the anchor. So a busy guy here. Right now I could be almost the leading scorer for the runners just sitting in this chair. And Jarkel Joyner knocks down a jumper, and that's his fourth point. And the runners finally snap three. They were shooting 15% coming out of that timeout. It is 20 to 6 Aggies, and maybe they can get some energy here as the Aggies using their big men to get down there just way too close. And again, another ball in the hands of the runners. They can't hold on to it. And, and it's Aggie ball. Greg Chu has missed probably four from point blank range. I mean, super short buckets. It could be 28-6. And look at their stats from three point range. One of seven. This could be a lot worse. Inbounds goes to Henry who kicks it out to Chu at the top. That's Bobbitt with the ball. Over the far side, Terrell Brown, and now back out to Harris. Well, that's some deep Drives penetration. Drives in off glass, nothing there. Put back, no good. Scramble for the ball. This one's going to come down to... For a second, it looked like Holden had it, but he was tangled up, and Justin McCall pulls it down, and Holden now back with the ball at the top of the key. McCall driving, trying to get something going. Off glass, no call, rebound Aggies. Here comes Buchanan. Yeah, watch out. On top, Terrell Brown wide open off the iron. Rebound runners who give it back again. They cannot hang on to a defensive rebound. And Henry knocks down a jumper. It is 22 to 6. Aggies on top. 6.38 to play. We got a whistle and we'll get another media timeout because of this. Twenty-three six. Right, and coach Jans, I was reading his lip to his assistant coaches, and he says, you know, goes, can Eli make a bucket? <laughs> you know, he's got Chua <laughs> missing these short one footers he's a very good player so he's thinking he just said can he not make a bucket thought we we're going to go to the under eight timeout but i guess not they stretched that one time out right into they, a, they did make the, at 8 17 they did you're up partner 
So Joyner at the top. Aggies defense has been stifling. The runners offense equally unimpressive as Joyner gets another shake and bake jumper. He's open and got it, but off the iron. And the fight for the ball and everybody goes down, including the official. That's gonna be Aggie ball last I saw. If they go to the video, you'll see it's Aggie ball. It is. Everybody fell right into the lap of Casey Owens, first season head coach. You'll see it right here. They go right into Coach Owens' lap there. And he's like, hey, whoa, wait a minute. Head coach in the NBA Development League for a lot of years. Coach is down in, coach down in Staples Center. Like, hey, these are the Jack Nicholson seats. Thought they were safe over here in Bakersfield. That might be the way to get a comeback, though, is to take out the bench. <laughs> Holden, Jarkel. Again, Harris at the top of the key, gives it up to Henry. Runners edging out on Mamet, leaving Henry wide open for a three. He's already hit two, misses that one. Damian Durham gets a rebound that actually reached the floor before he pulled down the rebound. And it's Joyner. Covered by Harris up at the top. That's an open three for Edler Davis off the iron. They're getting one shot, and that's it. And Greg, there's nobody underneath the hole for the Roadrunners. And ironically, you just saw the piece, local media, the Roadrunners third in the nation in offensive rebounds for 13 and a half. And tonight, I haven't seen a lot of Roadrunners underneath the glass. Not much at all. McCants coming back into the game. Just saw an Aggies turnover right there. Ricky Holden working the offense at the top. Runners are just not getting any good looks right now. And the Aggies defense is just absolutely fired up. Another look for Edler Davis in the corner, and again off the iron. So two open looks. Neither one goes down. McCants gives it up over to Harris. McCants not even looking at the rim from outside. Which makes it all the more unlikely that he's the guy who hit the bucket from beyond half court to win a game against Grand Canyon. He doesn't even look at the bucket from three-point range. That's going to be a foul on Suber on five on the shot clock. Wow, that's not a smart foul. That is a tough, tough call to take right there. Five seconds on the shot clock. The Roadrunners looking to get some defensive pressure going. They're covering everything well. And with five seconds left, they foul. That's going to put Terrell Brown at the line. It's a one and one. The runners could use some good fortune with a miss here. And they do. Super with the rebound. And they held on to it. This has been an amazingly lackluster first half by the runners. Cartrell Thompson will come in for CSU Bakersfield. And Rod Barnes is looking for anyone to help out. Nice dish. Damian Durham went behind the back and they gave it up to Suber for their first real easy deuce of the night. It's 23 to 8. 415 to go in the first half. Henry, who again not a lot of offense, has already shot from three-point range four times. He's made him twice. Shot clock down to 10. Missed there. Rebound comes down to Suber. Jarkel Joyner and I. And you could hear Coach Jans. He's going to be on Brown. See once again, that's flipped his heels a little bit, I guess, right there. The foul on Terrell Brown. And we are going to go to a timeout with New Mexico State in command. 23 to 8. We'll be right back. Three fifty-six remaining in this first half. Twenty-three to eight. New Mexico State Aggies now bring into the ball game Jabari Rice out of Dorchester, Massachusetts. So new guys coming out for the Aggies, and they are up big time right now. Damian Durham back of the rim doesn't get it to go, but Jarkel Joyner able to get the rebound. Cartrell is in, as we mentioned. Cartrell Thompson, Ricky Holden. 
Joyner throws over to Edler Davis. Hands over to Ricky and he surveys it. The runners are very fortunate to be down by 15. Again, can't buy it, but a big rebound and a putback by Thompson. And I'll tell you what, that's the energy and the kind of play that the runners need. And they get it from a guy who's had limited minutes this year in Cartrell Thompson. Chum lost his left sneaker. And McNeil's going to come in for Durham. And the Roadrunners, Greg, with 317 left, are in double digits. More, more on what you're showing me later. <laughs> That's just goodness. Random NBA score. Well, we are in SoCal. Lakers beat the Celtics 129-128. Wow. Wow. Out of control, Aggie. And Coach Jams doesn't like it, A.J. Harris. Think about this for a moment, Vance. As bad as this first half has been, the runners with this stop and maybe a bucket or two can get into within single digits before they go in the locker room. Well, and nobody would wager that they're going to have two really bad halves in a row. So you get the cobwebs out if there are. Joiner. They've done a really nice job on Joiner. <laughs> nice job on everyone. And that's got to be a foul. That's Edward Davis who drew the contact and got the bumper. Johnny McCann's foul. Edward Davis drew the contact. Knew he was going to get it and deliver off the glass. And the Roadrunners have an opportunity to bring it within 10. 247 remains here. The first foul shot of the game. Okay, 240 and counting in this first half. Need another stop, this momentum's on the side right now. Aggies can stop Aggies. looking down low, Greg. They're not looking down low anymore. They're trying to do everything from well, up high. They don't have as much size out there right now. They do not out there. Cartrell, they try to There you go. Who I think just changed pivot feet. Another turnover. And another turnover is... Chomp just took it right back. And, oh, that's an offense, and he ran right through him. Great defensive play by Edler Davis, who I think took one right on the chin, literally. So Chua is going to have to come Wiener back in. coming back in. They're going to get some size back in there. Durham comes in for the Roadrunners. Look at this right here. Well, that's a good look at Edler Davis. Man, oh, man, did he just take one for the team. Well, they're going to look at video here, I think. Maybe not. No, no, no. They're just clarifying something. I have an interesting score for you, by the way. Grand Canyon at home leads Rio Grande Valley by just five points with six minutes to go. That game's still very much in the balance as the Aggies began tonight tied with the Lopes for first place, and the runners just one game back. Oh, heavy implications in the desert and right here in the San Joaquin Valley. Joyner. Joyner just put a guy on the ground, but did not have the ball. Harris went straight down. And McCants can't hang with Joyner. He's going to get a shot here. Well, he decides to go out with it. Cartrell has it down low. Has it they got four away. guys on Cartrell. Six in the shot clock from the elbow. Jarkel. They cut it to eight. And Jan has seen enough. He wants a timeout. The 30 seconds. And that's going to bring the fans to their feet. They've seen the runners score more points in the last four minutes. Then they did in the left first 15. Greg, you tell me the last time you've seen a standing ovation with 15 points. <laughs> or last time I saw a standing ovation for losing by eight. <laughs> it's been a while. Storylines write themselves. 145 left here in this first half. 23 to 15. For those of you that are just getting to ESPN3, it's been a very unique start. And here's a perfect pass from... Durham down low into Suber, and then Cartrell comes in and puts one off the glass perfectly. I think that bucket by Cartrell Thompson is to see Ricky Edler Davis with a three-point play there, and then Jarkel Joyner knocking down a jumper. He now has six points. That bucket by Cartrell Thompson was an energy hustle play that got this team moving in the right direction. And now they're down by eight, and if they continue to play great defense, they're showing a little bit of a zone right here, a matchup that maybe they can cut into this lead even further. 
They do look a little Aggies look a little confused. Oh, what a bucket by Trevor Queen. Queen. Lions things with a three. That's a big, big bucket. bucket. Oh, absolutely. Runners were hoping to get something going on defense there, create some kind of turnover and get closer and get this crowd into it, but it got quiet again. Ricky Holden, dominant southpaw, goes into the paint and comes back I thought out. Ricky was going to try to go up and create some uh, contact there, but he decided to dish it. We have an update from Grand Canyon. With 3.33 to play, it's tied at 62. Oh, boy. Rio Grande Valley comes here on Saturday, by the way. How about this? Looked like McNeil oh, lost the handle. Neil. I thought he lost the handle on the ball, but he came up and he dropped one back to a nine-point lead for New Mexico State under a the minute The runners ago. get a stop here. They can go, and they almost got a turnover. If they get a stop here, they can cut this lead to seven or six. Harris has been slipping all over the floor. Queen pump fakes, throws it in the corner. Look out, McCann pump fakes. Oh, and they got him. McNeil got him on the neck with his foot. He was so high up, it's quite a, a really unique and unseen call most of the time. Yeah. You got a guy with the ankle on his neck. To me, that's a no call. Have a little kung fu fight going yeah, on there. He's got up so high. Cants to the line. It's gonna be a one and one though, so big free throw here. And he didn't miss his first opportunity. He made his second, but he missed his first. So runners have to block out here, get the rebound if there's a miss. And they'll have the last shot of the half. Nine point lead. Buchanan looking to check in. So bonus situation. Pants at the line. Miss. There's your rebound. McNeil with the board. Again, a big miss. Runners, 25 seconds remain. They're going to sit on this until the final shot. See what kind of shot they get. So a mismatch up top, but they may just be rope a Jarkel to come down. Then they do make the switch, and it's A.J. Harris now. Nine seconds. They are in foul. The bonus as well, not the double bonus, but they're in the bonus. Joiner for three. Got it. Wow. That look. At the buzzer. 26-20. Here's another look at it, Greg. Yeah, they wanted a foul actually on this as well, but they didn't get it, but they got the bucket. The officials looking at it to make sure it's a three, I would imagine. But the runners are going into the locker room down six, and they've never been happier. When we come back, we'll have stats, highlights, and then a great halftime piece with our head wrestling coach at CSU Bakersfield. Things are just getting going here on ESPN3 2620. The runners battling back. We'll see you in a minute. Here we go. Second half action. Holden across the top, pulls up from the elbow, comes up just a hair short. Super, big rebound down low. Big offensive oh, rebound. Damn. Huge offensive rebound. The crowd. They didn't get a lot of that in the first half. Wanting that. Super shows high on Harris. Runners down by four. When's the last time we could say that? I think Chua just got away with the travel. He's shuffled both feet before that. Shot from the corner, short. Long rebound. That's nobody's fault. Just a super long ricochet off the rim. Brown starts the second half for the Aggies. And Holden starting the second half. Rare moment where he did not start the game. Durham stands down the paint on defense. Oh, there's a pull, wide open shot, yeah. short. Battle for it down low. Edward Davis comes down with it, much to the delight of the Icardo Center. Probably now a good time to tell you that Rio Grande Valley knocked off Grand Canyon, 72-69. Oh, oh Joyner misses from a foot. So Grand Canyon loses at home. And they are now seven and two. Durham, runners with the steal. Durham. A 
again, very low scoring game here. Runners struggled mightily in the first as a pass down nice low. Pass. Beautiful command, beautiful ball movement. No foul after the fact. Coach Jams starting to sense that the opposing team, the Roadrunners, is starting to find a little bit of a groove here. They try to backdoor, and it's a nice backdoor play. They're going to say that's gonna be a, a block. blocking foul on the Roadrunners. So for a moment, things will get quiet. The foul is going to be on James Suber. And that is his fourth foul. James Suber has this one right here. Already seen some great energy. He's so he gets it to be the ladies, he got free. Chick-fil-A! The press announcer Mike Cushine getting everybody pumped for Chick-fil-A. For those of you that might not be aware of it in the New Mexico region, Chick-fil-A here locally sponsors a free throw promotion oh, where yeah, if the opposing team misses two straight free throws in the second half, they're halfway there. In the second half, everybody in the house gets free Chick-fil-A. And their mascot just happened to walk in, so I don't know if that's synergistic or not we'll see but Terrell Brown quiets the Chick-fil-a crowd 27 24 for those just joining us this game was at 1.23 to 6 New Mexico State Holden off to Durham Durham looking for some space gonna be tough against Clayton Henry comes around the top Durham pulls from way down oh goodness and we're tied. Time. We're tied. Damian Durham leaves you speechless when he makes any misses. He really does. Oh my goodness. What a shot. Harris wants to answer. High dribble in the corner. How about this? Henry Tough tried three. to answer. Joyner says, nope, I got Good it. Good defense. Roadrunners down really. the middle of the floor. Joyner stops and pulls in the free throw line. Gets his own rebound over to Holden for three. Rattles in and out, doesn't go. Chua with the rebound. Well, you're here in the crowd with every miss now. This, this building had no energy for 45 minutes. Coach Jan slowing things down. Wants a more deliberate pace. Cartrell Thompson into the game. That's going to be a mismatch for speed. They better look out there. Wide open shot for Bob, and he says no. Eight on the shot clock. Harris back over in the corner to Bobbitt. Not a good shot. And Durham with his own rebound. He'll take it. What have we noticed here, Vance? Now it's New Mexico State. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, that was ridiculous. A lean-in three. A lean-in three. you got to be kidding me, Greg. And the runners have the lead. Across the top, a corner shot, another southpaw. There's a lot of them tonight. Doesn't get it, but an easy follow by Clayton Henry. And, and the point I was going to make until that bucket, it's New Mexico State only getting one shot. The runners get the rebound, but not in that instance. Greg Lee waiting to come in. It will be a media timeout once this action stops. But this crowd now has a nice buzz to it. Coach Jan standing right in front of us, arms crossed, pensive. Great pass down low. There's a great shot for Edward Davis. He got fouled twice. Runners up three, 32-29. Battle between Chua and Cartrell Thompson. I'll tell you what, Chua. Cartrell Thompson has done a great job since he's been in this uh, game. What a backdoor pass. You've got to look out great. for it. Joyner got caught sleeping there. Runners lead 32-31, 15-10 left here in the second half. And it's like the lid just got taken off this place from quiet to super loud. Under 15. Not a sellout on a Thursday night, but a good crowd. An expectant crowd, Greg. They want something to happen. Joiner stops at the elbow extended. He is a mid-range demon, that guy is. His mid-range game is spectacular. Shaky pass. Now Bobbitt has it up high, no threat there. Durham, oh, that's got a Henry. steal. Damian Durham is electrified. Cartrell with a push out high, and that'll bring us to a media timeout, but Rod Barnes is clapping. Don't blink, everybody. This thing is changing quickly. 34-31, CSU Bakersfield up on ESPN3.
And welcome back to the Icardo Center in Bakersfield, California. Our next ESPN3 broadcast is a doubleheader Saturday, February the 9th. First, the feud on the field. It's NCAA Wrestling, Fresno State, CSU Bakersfield, outside on the main soccer field, 1 o'clock Pacific time on ESPN3. Then at 7 o'clock, men's basketball back inside the Icardo Center, UT Rio Grande Valley against these runners next Saturday. 7 p.m. this Saturday, I should say, 7 p.m. on ESPN3 to watch. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. And that Rio Grande Valley team coming into town on Saturday wins tonight at Grand Canyon, 72 to 69. So right now, the Aggies sole possession of first if they, as we speak, and if they win, they have a one-game lead. Should the runners win, we have a three-way tie for first place in the WAC. Man, it's been a weird night, hasn't it? It could get weirder. Terrell Brown inbounding the ball for the Aggies, who find themselves down by three. Who would have thought that just a half hour ago? Harris at the top. Runners edging out at the top. McCants giving it over to Brown. Brown to McCants. They look inside. Nothing there, but McCants is bouncing off. That's going to be a Greg Lee. Got him with the hip. And you know what, Greg? I I'm fine with that. I'm fine with some contact with these guys rolling into the keys. If you're a runner fan, you're like, good. They're not getting. They're not getting uncontested layups. No, that's three on Lee, though. That's that's early to have three right now. As the Aggies will inbound it. Chua on the outside. That's where you want him, by the way. They give it back out to Harris at the top. Marshall Thompson edging. Chua was Ooh. wide open for a Ooh. moment. Corner three, knocked down. Beautiful shot. Troubling Queen, who's he had a three earlier to give him a 10 point lead. And now we're tied at 34. Ricky holding the Durham. You know he's looking to shoot. He made his last two. Oh, dangerous pass. Runners offense looks so much different now that they're attacking. And another bad pass. And that is Harris with the steal and the score. Vance, the runners are assuming that no one's going to be there when they make the next pass. And Aggies in the first half stifling defense. Had at least four steals. Combine that with some shaky ball handling in the first half. Everything the Roadrunners do have to be, it just has to be perfect, right? That runner's three-point lead is now a two-point deficit. That's how quickly things change. Oh, and they pick up wow. their dribbles this high up. Boy, they get themselves in trouble. That's a bad foul by Chua. So the foul on Chua, 30 feet from the bucket. Just his first. Chom comes in for Chua. Wow, his first foul in all the action he's seen in that first half. Ricky Holden calling out a play. 12.53 left in the ball game. New Mexico State by two. Holden was wide open. He dribbled a couple more times. And we're going to have a foul on the Yankees after the shot. And a As foul. Andrew Davis goes down. That's going to be on McCanson. Yep. Right? It is. Foul on McCanson. Knocking Edler Davis out of bounds, blocking out. And I think they're gonna look at video. New Mexico State fans, they travel pretty well. There's a contingency of them yeah, back they here. Do. And they do. They wanna they wanna see it down here. They've had not, not much to complain about until right about now. <laughs> just, just, just look back at them and remind them how many times the uh, Roadrunners went to the line in the first half. Yeah, uh, once, right? One foul shot, 12 for the Aggies, who fortunately for the Roadrunners have only made half of them. Reminder, everybody, we're back here Saturday night as UTRGV will be in the house and they'll be coming over here from the desert after a huge win tonight over Grand Canyon. So things are getting very, very interesting here in the WAC. Not only interesting in the WAC in the regular season, this tournament in Las Vegas is going to be wide open. You taking me? Absolutely wide open. <laughs> oh, I thought you were answering absolutely to taking me. Thanks, Greg. 
So the runners have to maintain possession after the hold in bucket. We're tied at 36. 12.45 left in the game. The inbounds, they just throw it up to Durham up top. He'll shoot it. Good idea. Yeah. Pass out top, but this time it's Edler Davis who gives it back to Holden, who's running the offense. Runners spread it out. And look at the minutes that Cartrell Thompson is racking up. And deservedly so. And the oh steal boy. of a bad pass. Is it going to be offensive? It's, it's, oh, I thought it may be on the cans for shoving him out of the way. But it was a smart foul if it was <laughs> because he didn't get the easy two. I don't know what angle we're going to see here if we see a replay on that as Ricky's coming out and Tasha Moore comes back in. Well, the discussion with the officials. So they want the oh, shot clock at 26. All right, right. It's not a, not in the bonus of any kind. It's early. So they just want to reset the shot clock. We're again tied at 36, 12.30 left to play. You've got to watch McCants on this inbounds play. He sets the screen. Queen, who's already hit a couple threes. He's going to have to chomp, who's looking for somebody to give it back to. Watch some great defense by the Roadrunners. Cannon giving it up to Queen once again. Nine on the shot clock. Oh, goodness. Going to get a foul call here. Boy, oh boy. It's going to be on Edler Davis. I think that's third on Justin. So now we got Lee and Edler Davis with three fouls apiece. Super with four. Super with four. And again, the inbounds tied at 36. Goes to Terrell Brown. He has Joyner on him. Brown brings it back out top to reset. Aggies again with a new shot clock. And we're down to the shot clock, I should say, to 10. They kick it out. Long three right there, in and out, rims off, put the tip and put back in by Chum. And the Aggies are on top, 38-36. So reasserting themselves on the offensive glass as they have the last couple of times in the first half. Yeah, I was wondering when McCall's gonna come in, it's gonna be next dead ball. That's Justin McCall for the road runners. Joyner working on Buchanan. Drives hard, nothing there. Edward Davis gets fouled in the score. We are tied at 38 as Edward Davis will go to the line. We'll take a quick break. With 11.32 left, it's tied at 38. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're tied 38 apiece. Vance Palm here with Hall of Famer Greg Kerr. What do you see on the stat sheet? Anybody see anything stepping out to you? Well, remember when they were shooting 15%? Yeah. CSU Bakersfield now shooting 43%, shooting 61% in the second half. And they're going to the line right now to take the lead once again. Once down 23 to 6, they did grab a three point lead. Now back to a tie as they just tied it with Edler Davis with the end one, and we'll see if we can go back on top by one. Well, that'll get that home crowd going, getting that percentage up that high. And Strokes it. that's just their second foul shot as well, both by Edler Davis. Inconceivable. They start up high to Queen. Queen with McCall guarding him. They drop it down low, and the, the paint is wide open. Great collapse by the Roadrunners. It's a nice defensive effort right now by CSU Bakersfield. Brown comes in tight. Nice contact. He thought he would get it. Didn't. Nice no call he there. Went into a lot of tall trees there, and it got deflected. Blocked shot. Partially blocked. Vance, it's early. 10.55 left to go. But if the runners pull this out, I think uh, first words out of Coach Barnes' mouth would be Cartrell Thompson. And Damian Durham. Oh, Damien, it's Damien. <laughs> oh, that's a strong move, a strong move. What's the call? Oh my goodness. Wow. What was that call? Oh my goodness, and it was an emphatic call. So McCall gets called for an elbow up high, and I will say no, that it, it Terrell was, Brown sold it pretty well. He, he did. I'll, I'll say this, he extended his arm pretty far, 
and pro it was not a bad call. Let's get that straight. However, <laughs> that call could be called 15 times a game. And it would have been such a dynamic jolt sure. to this Absolutely. crowd. But it's a moot point now. Offensive foul, McCall. McCall is on Queen, by the way. That's a nice matchup right there. Queen's going to try to expose Chua it. Chua is not ready for it. McQueen has to go back and get it. Holden just takes it from Queen. Holden wants to go to the hoop. He does, and he's fouled. And this time, Terrell Brown not being bailed out. And Coach Jan saying, look, that's the same thing. No, it's not. And ironically, Brown took a much bigger hit on that one. So Terrell's got three now. And at the line, Ricky Holden, senior leader, incredible story. Very good foul shooter. Moved all the way across the country to pursue his dream. <laughs> I was talking about that the other night with one of my other media color guys. But that was with Jarkel. This is Ricky. At one point, he made 23 in a row earlier this season. I said, good thing Greg has all the cachet he does. Holden, second one. Rattles that one in, not the smoothest. He did rattle that one. 10 19 remains here in regulation. 40 to 38. This CSU Bakersfield crowd was out of it for the entire first half. Brown comes in low and he gets wow. fouled on the way to the hole and he hit McNeil right in the jaw. So these layups okay. are getting quite physical. Clearly, uh, Coach Jansen didn't like the ball the other end, got that ball this end. Jarrell Brown had 12 points against Chicago State. So, sorry, 19 points against Chicago State. Here's that drive once again. What? I, I, I don't what? know what, what happened there defensively. That there was a foul call on that. He was retreating, had his hands up. I think it's a no call. Harris will come back in, and he's going to come in for Brown strictly for foul reasons on Brown. But Damian Durham, didn't, he did not sneak past my eyes. He's in the game. Some pressure, full court pressure by the Aggies. They get it into Jarkel, perfect guy. Forty to forty, exactly ten minutes in county. Crowd didn't like that. The exaggerated flop almost. Davis thought about pulling the trigger. He goes hard to the baseline, stops, comes in. What nice a beautiful move. move! And got a whistle. Got the body on McCants. Got McCants on his hip, basically. It's great footwork here, Greg. Excellent footwork. Absolutely, and that you're just not going to play defense when you're on the side of a guy. You know, today's basketball, the offensive player can create the contact, the foul's still going to be called on the defense. And the Euro step. We've got a lot of tools now, yeah? yeah? Edler Davis. Strokes the first in. Made all three of his <laughs> Holden. Bobbitt back in the game. Hands coming out with those three fouls. So the chess match has definitely started with both coaches. There's head coach Rod Barnes and top assistant Jeff Conero. Edler Davis. If he makes this, it'll be a two-point lead. And he does. 42 to 40. Full court pressure by the Roadrunners. And they're man-to-man -man full court. All 10 players inside the half-court line. They get it to Bobbitt. Look out for the long pass deep. Runners in man-to-man. -man. Queen running the baseline, and he's had a couple threes. That's a great pass, and a big foul by Cartrell Thompson down low, but had he not done it, it was going to be a thunder dunk by Chula. Uh, and he tried to time it. He, I'm sure he got some ball. He's got a lot of, a lot of Chua as well. Got a lot of ball there. Just going through the player to get to the ball. And a great entry pass by the Aggies to get that Easy look. The crowd definitely into it. 
Chua silences them momentarily. Nine twenty-seven left here, everybody. Already the big news tonight: UTRGV beats Grand Canyon in the desert. The second, the miss. They didn't yell nearly as loud on the second one, <laughs> and, and it's a one-point game. They were yelling for Chick-fil-A. Right. They're, they're, <laughs> we have a very altruistic crowd. Yeah, yeah. Very altruistic. It's all about that Chick-fil-A. Joiner across the top. Boy, Buchanan gave him a lot of space. Durham. Edler Davis, seven on the shot clock. Join her to the free throw line. Stop. Pull. Mid range madness from Jarkel Joyner. He's got such a great vertical, and he, he's so quick, he can just get defenders off him. You can and wants to go baseline. Gets stuck down there, throws it out to Bobbitt. Queen has been. Oh, look at this. A turnover by the Aggies. Uh, I was just going to say, Queen has been effective, but that pass getting away right there. Not necessarily his fault, but the pass did get away. Coach Jans would like an answer from CJ. What Off happened? Bob it. Three point lead, 8.40 to go here. This the crowd. And, and the ball. And the crowd <laughs> has gone from quiet to crazy to nervous. You just see Durham hanging out in the corner. He wants to launch another three. It's been a while. He's made his first two. And A.J. Harris has to follow him all around. Durham's wide open. Oh, Big rebound oh, by Edler Davis. Now it's Cartrell. Oh, great hustle by both teams. And this might be a pull. It is an ill-advised pull, probably. Coach Gans doesn't like it. Harris pulled with only three of his teammates down there. Yeah, and but it's good. He was open. I, I don't mind that shot. He is wide open. Under eight. You don't mind it when he misses. You mind it when he misses. <laughs> oh, look at Jarkel. Oh. And you know when oh. you know when he's feeling. You just know when he's feeling. That was great defense by Harris. That's what I'm saying. Great defense. When you're feeling it, you don't care. Yeah. Now the crowd is up seven and a half left here in regulation. Look out! It went off. Ooh. He said it was deflected and he was right. Queen trying to go to work on Durham. Won't let it happen. Eight on the shot clock. They feed down to Chua and it's Durham. Oh, oh I don't know. Whoa. Wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. who's that going to be on? I'm sure they're going to call it on Damien. It's got to be because it can't be Thompson. Oh, they called it on Cartrell. Wow, Cartrell Thompson. And things getting feisty out there as well for some between some of the players. 46-41, are you kidding me? 7.15 left in this big whack game back right after this. And welcome back to the Icardo Center, Bakersfield, California. Greg Kerr alongside Vince. And welcome back to the Icardo Center in Bakersfield, California. Greg Kerr alongside Vance Paul. And right now with 7.15 to play, we have a reversal of fortune. CSU Bakersfield, which trailed 23 to six in the first half, now leads 46-41. As New Mexico State will go to the line to try to cut into that five point lead. Eli Chua stepping onto the line. Hey, Chick-fil-A again, let's do it. He'll be shooting two. And he drops the first and it's a four point game. Remember early when the game started, Vance, keys to the game, one was Mexico State better get off to a fast start and play 40 minutes. Well, they got off to the fast start. The runners have come back. With an all hands on deck, Cartrell Thompson. The runners were an absolutely weary team when they played at Las Cruces in the second half when the Aggies made their comeback. That has not happened tonight. So Coach, Coach Jans came out with that half court trap press. And I think Coach Barnes would love to see that. Three-point lead as Chua made both foul shots. And Greg Reed didn't have any options. And I'll tell you what, Coach Jans looked like. They we did everything another. perfect. He just said we played. They made another one. Five-point lead, Greg. Chua working far side. Bad pass. Oh, got, got it lucky. right back. Fortunate. They get it down low with the easy bucket. CJ Bobbitt scores, and it's a three-point game with six and a half to play. 
and the runner's defense, they were taken off on a break. They, they, were. Thought, they had to, thought they had a steal. Yeah, they thought Durham had it. Holding gives it off to Jarkel Joyner, who works the top. He's been fabulous these last six, seven minutes. Durham launches. Long shot, and the rebound coming down and knocked out by the Aggies as they reached over Edler Davis. We're going to see Brown and the Cants come back in, and every time Durham touches it, Jans, there's Jans is letting his players know, get on him. Buchanan and Bobbitt taking a seat right now for the Aggies. Runners with a full shot clock, 6-12 left in the game. Joyner with 15 points right now. He's been the leader for the runners virtually every game last month and a half. Edler Davis with 10. No one on the floor for the Aggies is in double figures on the floor. Joyner again, another tough shot. In oh, and out. Rattles. And look at Greg Lee. Lee. Rebound by Lee. Gives it up to Edler Davis, who's in the paint, loses it, but a foul call. That's going to be Chua. And Edler Davis will go to the line. Edler Davis. Worked in the glass. Boy, they've done a great job rebounding the second half. First half, it wasn't there. Remember, the first half, they couldn't hold on to the rebound. First one goes down, and it's a four-point runner. State. The runners were not bad on the boards. They just could not maintain a rebound. It looked like they had it first. Justin McCall is going to come back in for Greg Lee. So now the chess match moves by that gentleman, Rod Barnes, wanting to continue with athleticism, continue with glass crashers. And having said that, here comes Suber. So he's going to go as big as he can right Suber now. Suber in for Durham. And the runners with a five-point lead, under six minutes to play. This has been the prettiest, ugly game I've seen in a while. <laughs> Harris working it up top. He's got some momentum there. Queen, who tonight certainly looks like he's looking for a shot. He's made a couple threes. McCants backing down Suber. Nothing there. Maintain an off blast, oh, it's gosh. clean. So they really kept that possession alive. He got a much needed basket to cut the lead down to three. There's no coaching box here apparently because Coach Jans is working the whole sideline. Davis with three, that's gonna be off the mark. We were right behind that when it was off from the moment it left his hand. And the Aggies potentially could tie this thing. They go down low again. That might. Oh, oh they're going to call that on Edler Davis. The Roadrunner crowd wants the offensive foul. Look at that one, possibly. Edler Davis, that's going to be his fourth foul. Here it is. Oh, no, that's a, that's a bad call. They had it on the jumbo. That was an extension of his left arm. German Lee getting ready to come back in. Boy, that was a huge call down by three to get that call. The camps just cleared him out with his left arm. Makes the first to two. Durham in, Lee in, Edward Davis out. McCall out. Justin has only one foul, McCall, so obviously a great source to go back to. Suber with four, Lee with three. McCants makes them both. He cuts the lead down to one with five minutes to play. 5.04 to be exact. And Durham comes across as they throw over the pressure. Joiner again, draw contact. But he got his own rebound. He put it back in. He was short on the shot. It came right back at him. Caught it midair and just put it right back up off glass. And the runners are back up by three. Harris working the top. This is the queen who keeps this time. Fakes the handoff. Here's a big Chua play here. working on Suber. Steal. Here comes a dunk. Oh, he oh. couldn't handle it. Couldn't Hold handle it. With it. the steal and Durham could not hold on to the pass. Oh. That would have brought the house down. And that's got to be a charge. And it is. Holman picking up a big charge on Harris. Good defense. You're going to see it again right here from, from behind. And he got there in time. And 
When an official sees a guy fall straight back and not to the side, it's a clue that he got stepped in. You can always see he's moving a little bit, but when the offensive player initiates that contact. Greg, the Roadrunners have 10 fouls, New Mexico State has seven. Holden has a lane, will he go up? He will. Chua, Chua, that's all right, Chua stood there to take a foul and Holden just worked around him. It looks like he puts Jess wants to time out with 3.56 to play. It's the runners on top, 54 to 49 over New Mexico State. And Kyle, are we standing, you say? Taking a break, we'll be right back. Three fifty-six left in this superb second half of basketball. 54-49, the runners lead by five. New Mexico State has it. Every trip to the foul line is a two-shot foul. So the runners want to play solid defense, but they don't want to put them on the charity strike. Even though the Aggies haven't been perfect there, they've been better in the second half than the first. Durham on Henry. Henry picks up his dribble way up high. Steal, we think, and it's gonna be a push foul, and it's gonna be on Clayton Henry. I'll say this, it was a great play by the runners, but you don't fall down by that. Okay? That's, that's, there's a lot of acting in college basketball right now. Did I just say it? Well, Damian knocked his teammate out. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of acting going on, and I think the runners got a call there that maybe they should have gotten. Since we went away during that 30-second timeout that was extended, we'll stay here during this media timeout. It gives us an opportunity to again remind everybody that the next ESPN3 broadcast is a doubleheader. Saturday, February 9th. First, it's the feud on the field. It's NCAA Wrestling, Fresno State Duel, ESU Bakersfield, outside on the main soccer field, 10 o'clock Pacific time on ESPN3. And then, Saturday night, 7 p.m., men's basketball. We're back, and it's going to be right here inside the Icardo Center. Are you kidding me? UT, UT Rio Grande Valley, who just beat Grand Canyon tonight, will be in here, and that changes the complexion of everything. 7 p.m. on ESPN3 to watch. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Great for excitement and the buildup. There's your score. There it is. And uh, Cal Bap, we don't have an update on that one, but we know who's going to win. Yeah. So take care of them. But right now, again, we're three minutes, 36 seconds away from a three-way tie atop the wax as the runners hold on to this five-point lead. Which is amazing because in the first 12 minutes of the game, they didn't even have five points. Yeah, for those of you that just are coming into it now, what was that score you gave? We had CSU had four. It was 23 to six at one point. 23 to six. Now it's 54-49. Ricky Holden on the line. There's a shot of James Suber, jersey number four, with four fouls. Ricky Holden at the line, 336 remaining in regulation. Give you an update on that Cal Baptist game. 91 to 40, so no suspense there. And there's 231 left. And that's the Ricky Holden on the foul line. Three and a half. Remaining. What a response by the Roadrunners. Absolutely. But you can't let off the intensity of the second half. Whatever Rod Ford said at halftime got their attention. They're they working through it really deep. A three man weave around the top. What a rebound by Greg Lee. And Chua and misses it out from one foot. From one foot. Three he's minutes to go. That's a close look, hasn't it? Use the clock. You got a seven point lead. Boy, some of those passes are going to be lazy. That wasn't a smart one. To your point, Greg. Uh, you know, you're throwing in traffic right now. Eight on the shot clock. This is time for Jarkel Joyner to rise and shoot a mid ranger. Six on the shot clock. Here it comes. No, it's, it's a three, it looks good. That's a huge bucket, runners up by 10. I, I can't even believe we're saying they're up by 10. Harris
Marsh tries to go to work, floats one up. That's a nice, nice looking shot. bucket by AJ. That'll quiet the crowd to hurry because that's a great play. Mm, we have a runner down. Ricky Holden's down, and he is wincing in pain. Hopefully it's just pain and not structural pain. Well, now he's looking at his... Boy, he is he is really in pain. I don't happened. know what happened to him. Oh, Here he is right him. here. Oh, he got hit by an elbow by Chua. Oh, he got hit again by his own teammate, Sumer. So he got hit twice. He was in the head. Oh, so Sumer on the way well, by he got hit twice. Him. He got hit once by one of the Aggies whether that was McCants. Then he got hit by Suber. And he's bleeding from the mouth. Well, if you try to spin this on the positive, everybody gets to take a break over there. They got to get a breather, kind of get their wits about them. Coaching staff can go through a few different scenarios. As, right. it, as we speak, it's 59-51. Now they bring in the third official, as they always do, to take a look. There's Jarkel. Boy, that's a big bucket. That's a huge bucket. If we have any chance, Kyle, to look at that Holden again, I want to see the first hit on Holden. Doesn't matter what Zuber did. Well, yeah, it does. It hurt. But what I think it was McCants who was running through. That's the floater. That came a little late. Here it is. Right here. You see it right there. There. He, he took, ooh, it, kind yeah. of an aggressive Zuber elbow. Zuber gave him more of a blow than Chua did. But Jewett did hit him. So they're just, they missed the call if there's a foul. There's no foul. But they're looking to see if there's anything above the neck. There's Jarkel. He is pumped up after that nose, three. So I don't think we have anything there. <laughs> Common no call. Bucket counts. Eight point lead. Runner ball. That's what I'm thinking. Just still looking at Holden. We had a good shot there for a second. I don't see him coming back in. Right now, uh, right now, know. any second. I mean, you never know. I mean, 232 remains in regulation, 59-51. A pivotal Thursday night game here in Bakersfield, California. The CSU Bakersfield Roadrunners were down big time in the first half. I also think they were looking just now, the screen was not, people were not facing the screen. They were looking to see if that last joiner shot was a yep, three, yep. and they confirmed it, it was. So the lead is eight, 232 to go. I get the ball in the hands of Jarkel Joyner. Not so much to shoot, but if they want to foul, that's the guy I want on the foul line. Full court pressure by New Mexico State. Edler Davis wants to go long. All show. Puts it in the hands of Jarkel. Lee over to Edler Davis. Just slow it down and get it back. There you go. That's exactly what you want. Get a reach in foul. It's a almost a two-point possession because Jarkel's that good at the foul line. Terrell Brown has three fouls. He's that guarding Jarkel. But you don't want to get a cheap foul reaching in on Jarkel Joyner. The shot's got to go up quickly. Oh, my gosh. It hit the rim, they stays the alive. Rebound, and they can milk 30 more seconds, and now they're going to have to foul. Well, they're coming with the trap. They want to pull it up. Foul. Now McCall leaps now up high and gets it. Now they are. They're going to go after McCall. McCall gets fouled, and he'll go to the line. And Coach Barnes still grimacing and upset about the fact that the Roadrunners had to resort to a Justin McCall 30-footer. That's McCants' fourth foul. Justin realized there's only 149 left in the game. 149 left here in regulation. 59-51. Justin McCall at the line. Big free throws. He strokes them. The local. And right here, when I see a team that has a guy with four fouls on him, and they're they're coming after us, I have the ball in the hands of the guy who's being guarded by the guy with four fouls. He doesn't want a foul. He'll be gone. Greg's talking about Johnny McCants. Next four. trip down, whoever McCants is guarding, I give the ball to that guy. McCall knocks them both down. Those are huge free throws. Ten point lead for the local Bridgeview High School. Big buckets. 145 and County. Roadrunners feeling it right now on defense. McCants up high. He's not going to do anything out there. We don't believe. Hands off to Harris. Harris tries to create space. Does. Oh, what a nice look and a big follow dunk.
timeout by Quick Coach time Jans. 61-53, 133 remains here. It's a 30-second timeout. Seconds. We'll stay here again. Roadrunners will host UTR GV this Saturday night. And Tyson Smith had 21 in Rio Grande Valley's win. Terry Wynn Jr. had 15. And right. Down by two and a half, they win by three. New Mexico State's going to Grand Canyon Saturday night. So Absolutely. what a Saturday night of basketball. Absolutely. Be. Huge. Jarkel is doing what he does, the super sophomore. My partner, Greg Kerr, believes he is the best player in the WAC. Somebody bring us an argument against that. And I've got guys I can throw in the conversation. Your preseason player of the year, Labor from, uh, from Grand Canyon. You've got Milan Aqua from Cal Baptist. He's a man child. That guy's got a pro man body. Uh, through New Mexico State, you throw a neighbor or two out there, but Jarkel Joyner has gone up against the best each and every week. And, I mean, he's got 20 points tonight, and he's just been phenomenal week in and week out, game after game. Lee to Edler Davis, back to Holden. The pressure comes, they float it up to Jarkel Joyner. Ball. Just play pitch and catch between those two, and you got two 85% foul shooters. And oh, Durham. they wanted to foul Durham. They wanted to foul, now they're yelling yes. You don't need to shoot that. Damian pulls it back, 10 on the shot clock. Now they have Edler Davis in the corner. Now it is eight on the shot clock. Edler Davis, that's intentional, maybe. Wow. Maybe on Chua, but I'll tell you what, that's Chua's third. He had one to give. And Coach Jams right now is as frustrated as a head coach can be, his coaching staff. Jarkel Joyner, Ricky Holton sort of chest bumping there, going, man, this is so cool that we're in the lead because it was an ugly first half. Edward Davis misses the first. And Suber will be coming in for Edward Davis. 61-53, 70 seconds remain in regulation. Edler Davis with 12 points, make it 13. Queen comes back in. Queen has a couple threes, he might be launching one. It's a nine point game with 110. I would watch Queen, he runs the baseline a lot. I would watch Queen for a corner three. Roadrunner guards will pick up the Aggie guards at half court. Harris, big move to the bucket, kicks it in the corner, and Greg, of all people, McCants pulls, but Queen gets the offensive rebound, comes back, pulls the trigger, battle for it down low, McCants gets it foul from behind by Lee. He's gonna have to earn it at the foul line. Boy, oh boy, look at the effort by Johnny McCants to get that rebound in a sea of white players. He just went in there and just grabbed it for foul. Johnny McCants really coming strong right there. Who's hungry? Great play by McCants. Crowd knows Chick fil A still in play. McCants makes the first. We're going to see Edward Davis come in. Edward Davis for with four fouls coming in for Suber. Eight point lead for the Roadrunners. Still a three possession game. Redshirt sophomore out of Las Cruces. McCants misses the second. Rebound, Greg Lee. And that's a great rebound because that was a high rebound off the rim. Oh, Holden has it stripped from behind. Didn't know if he was going to lay it up or just try to kill time. Here eyes. comes Harris. Harris comes up, lays it in, and Coach Barnes living. 44.1 seconds. Oh, goodness, 62-56. Holden loses the ball again. McCants off to Harris. Back over to Brown. Brown fouled for three. Wow. A three-shot foul. It is all unraveling here for a moment. With a six-point lead, they'll go to the line to shoot three. In 38 seconds, they're going to look at the clock to see if they're going to see if it's a three. From my eyeballs, I thought it was. It's hard to tell. We had a coach in front of us. Yeah, it is a three. three shot. All three right, three. once again, Chick Fil A is on the line. If he misses two in a row. The Roadrunners have to show more composure than that. I thought down here Ricky was going to try to decide whether to lay it up or come back, and he decided to move it back and kill the clock. That didn't work out. A three-shot foul. You know, if you're under, under the rest right now, you got two timeouts. Just take one. Just turtle up with the ball and call a timeout.
Now they're trying to find out well, was it who Brown the that took is. the shot? Well, Coach Jansen's trying to get a better foul shooter. Well, no, it's Brown. <laughs> it's Brown. It's definitely Brown. Yeah. He's trying to get a better foul shooter up there. So, three huge, huge free throws. Oh, goodness. And can you imagine Terrell Brown delivering Chick-fil-A to this crowd? Got the second one. 38.3 seconds remain here. That was a three-shot foul. If he misses this one, do they get Chick-fil-A? Oh, no. Two in a row, Greg. Two in a row. <laughs> I'm working it for him. <laughs> Five-point game, 38 seconds. Four-point game. Davis, Edler Davis throws to hold, and hold is in All trouble again. Out. He's got to get rid of it. Oh, goodness My gracious. Goodness. What is happening to Ricky Holden? He's had three crucial. Rod Barnes just said call timeout. Turnovers. And now we've got 32 seconds left. The Aggies have the ball again. This game was. Rod Barnes just said to him, call timeout. For all intents and purposes, in control of the Roadrunners. They were up 10 just a flash ago. Now the ball nice gets deflected by Holden. Holden to Harris takes it. Harris pulls from the corner. Harris misses. Rebound. Tip back in. No good. A lot of contact down low and Suber's going to pick up his fifth. We're at 24.7 seconds. Every one of those seconds is valuable. And the Roadrunners are not showing any composure in these final seconds. So Suber comes in and just has to do what he has to do. Get, get the ball to Ricky Holden or Jarkel Joyner, and if you're in trouble, call timeout. Why they haven't called the timeout in the last two possessions, I don't understand. And I'm not talking about Rod Barnes, I'm talking about the players. Well, Coach Jans right now has to be the, most, the emotional roller coaster that the head coach could, that any coach could ever go through. All of a sudden, his team is right back in this thing this in a, a huge lead. way. Yeah. A 10 point lead with 127 left. Rod's going to take one of those two timeouts right now. And this crowd is just stunned with 24.7 seconds left. New Mexico State has one more free throw to shoot. If they make it, it's a two point ball game. Vance, if they make this shot, even if they don't, you do not have to shoot again if you're CSUV. So you've got two 85% foul shooters that you can put the ball in the hands of and just let them work it. You've still got another timeout in case they're in trouble. And just hold on to the ball until you're fouled. All you have to do is cross half court, which they haven't done the last three trips. But again, if you're under duress in the back court, call time out. Well, I can assure you that there are coaches and players watching ESPN3 right now for UTRGV. The camps, by the way, not a automatic. You got a block out here, too. But he's been stroking it tonight. Yes, he line. has, but you got a block out if he misses this. It's Makes two point it. Game. Two point game, 24.7. Full court pressure from the Aggies. Edler Davis runs the baseline, has a timeout. They get it in Joyner's hand. That's the guy you wanted. Jarkel. Back over to Edler Davis. Edler Davis back over to Jarkel. Now they've got to get it across half court. Or Jarkel does it. And he gets stripped from it. behind. It's a fast break. Nobody on him. A dunk. And we're tied at 62. Terrell Brown with the steal behind Jarkel Joyner. And this game is tied with seven seconds to go. Joyner will probably take the last shot, I would imagine. Can he get some space? He does. Jarkel. Short. It's short, the putback no good. And can you believe this? New Mexico State has taken the Roadrunners into overtime. They've cut the 10 point deficit in one minute and 27 seconds with some really bad decision making by the Roadrunners. And unbelievable. We get a look at that last shot by uh, Jarkel Joyner. I don't know if going up, if they got a piece of him. Uh, that was a little late to get held there, but lucky they didn't get called for over the back foul either. You see here again, this angle might be tough, but he, 
Not there. The first reach, but that would have been a ticky tack foul. That's a good no call. So we are going to overtime. Five minutes of basketball, and now all those players with four fouls. Edler Davis, Zuber, McCants. They got to negotiate the next five minutes without fouling out. I'll tell you what, no matter who wins this game, they're going to feel fortunate. No matter who loses this game, it's going to feel like they gave it away. That's a great commentary, Greg. It's, it's perfectly said. The Roadrunners battled back from the cellar in the first half to take control of the game, had it for all intents and purposes in their hands, and then literally gave it up out of their hands. New Mexico State played a dominant first half, an okay second half, let it slip away, but then some huge plays and a breakaway dunk to tie it at 62. Look at the body language. Oh yeah, that's what's they, they gonna gotta, be. They gotta, they gotta forget what just happened, flush it, and come out with some energy. Because you know the Aggies, when they walk out on the floor, are gonna be pumped. And what, assistant what, coach what, Jeff Conero telling Ricky Holden, forget it, let's go, let's go. You know, when you are dribbling up the floor against pressure, and you only see two guys in front of you, three are in pursuit. You've got to pull up that dribble, hold it, you've got a timeout. You already crossed half court. Pull up the ball and hold it. If New Mexico can pull out this five minute overtime, they'll stand alone in first place in the WAC. If the Roadrunners can somehow muster up a fight again here and win this, it'll be a three way tie atop the WAC standing. So this is a big time five minute overtime. Marshall Thompson going to be jumping for the, the runners against McCants, who again has four fouls. And the second jump ball of the evening. It's Mark overtime. Trump will win this jump. He's got two guys behind him. They get the ball, but they do get it. Holden. Jarkel wanted to push the issue here. Goes hard to the bucket, the and he will go to the clean. line. It's going to be on And Greg, it's, it's going to be very interesting. A study in psychology right now. Who can overcome? Boy, McCants reached in too. But that clearly was on Queen. Jarkel Joyner. Completely flummoxed. Calls in a check in for Edler Davis. And again, this 2018 2019 season so far has been a concerning one for Jarkel at the free throw line. Makes the second. Again, McCants, the big fella, has four. For the Roadrunners, as far as fouls for the Roadrunners, they have a pretty clean slate out there for players that can give them up. Brown, who had a big last two or three minutes for the Aggies, controls it up top. They can take the lead with a bucket here. Runners with good defense, five on the shot clock. That's a nice job there. Brown comes in and, oh, they're oh going to call the foul. Goodness. Oh. I think he got bailed out there. I That's going to be on. Definitely got bailed out either by the player or by the goal. We were blocked out, couldn't see the baseline, but uh, and yeah, we'll see it here. Oh boy! Oh boy! Well, this is one tough sport to appreciate. And now Cartrell <laughs> has four, and at the line, Terrell Brown. Put in the overtime, Chick Fil A. Certainly, be beneficial to this Roadrunner crowd in every way. They can maintain the lead with a miss and get some free food. Brown makes the second. Aggies pull it off. <clears throat> no press. 63 to 63. The Aggies have been to the line twice as many times as the Runners. 
And the game is going to overtime. That's you. Roadrunners putting the ball in Joyner's hand again. A high trap, a high trap, and he calls a timeout. And they only get two in, in overtime. Which is what they should have done three times during regulation. 4.06 remaining. 30 seconds timeout. timeout. One of them. He kept telling his players, call timeout. The caveat being you really don't want to get up there and get trapped. But Jarkel, not the tallest player on the court, you know, due to the Grand Canyon. Well, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Overtime here in Bakersfield, tied at 63, four minutes to go here in the extra period. Ricky Holden has it up top. Edward Davis tried to set him a pick. Here comes Ricky Holden. He kicks it off to Damian Durham. Durham from the corner, doesn't get it. Rebound Aggies. Runners needed a great possession there. They didn't get it. Go at McCants. He has four fouls. Harris, all alone, comes in and lays it up off the glass. Goodness. 65-63, the Aggies lead. Cartrell asking for it down low. McCants has five. Heather Davis goes up against Cants, and no, they say a travel. travel. Greg, it looks as though the Roadrunners have just lost the mojo. Yeah, they, they lost it the last minute and a half of regulation. And they had a 10-point lead. And right now, Coach Barnes has got his five in there. The only other sub that we've seen lately is McCall. They feed high turnover. Cartrell hands it to Ricky Holden. Could this be the turning point for the Roadrunners? Holden pulls it back. Just over three minutes to go here. New Mexico State by two, 65-63. My partner said it perfectly. This is going to be a very tough pill to swallow for whomever. Davis over to Joyner. Joyner comes in hard. Joyner up and... Big contact, no call. Cartrell Thompson comes in. Oh, another big contact, no call. Wow. Oh, wow. goodness. Steal by Edward Davis. He comes into Jarkel. Jarkel up off the glass. What, what a sequence there. Two and a half. And they let him play. I mean, they let them absolutely play down there. A lot of contact down on the paint. We're tied at 65, 222 and counting. Harris across the top to Brown. The crowd definitely into it. Now Brown, oh, who's the call on? That's going to be Joyner. And Terrell Brown. Whenever, is, whenever I see a, a, a guard jerk his head like he's just been shot out of a cannon, that's, that's an act nine out of ten times. I'm not saying there wasn't a foul, but that's an act. It worked. It, oh, it works all the time. Made one of two last time to the line. Made two of three on a three-point foul. Knocks this down, and New Mexico State back up, 66-65. It has been, you said it was a weird night. I said it could get weirder, and it did, Greg. Yeah. This has been a wild one. How about this? New Mexico State up two with 2.18 to go. The Roadrunners have to find their offense. They found it for the last eight, nine minutes of regulation until the, the collapse is the best way to call it. Holden across the top, sees Edler Davis flash in front of him, hands it over to Joyner, See, 12 when, on the shot clock. When McCants edges like that, that you know exactly what their guards do. Edler Davis pulls a long one. Wow. Wow. 68-67. That's stone cold money right there. A whistle blows, and what's That's, the call going to be? Oh, wow. What are you watching? Oh, wow. you got to ask yourself, away from the ball, at the foul line, nothing going on. OT. What are you watching that, that you feel compelled to call that? Because not much happened there. That's a gift. That's Brown ties it up gift. with 68-60 out. The only thing I can think of is he was making a break for the ball. And Jarkel was holding him. Well, if, if I miss that, I'll apologize. But so I'm I see guessing. Replay. I'm guessing, Greg. That one's off. Misses the, the second. We're tied at 68, 141, and counting. Oh goodness, what a story tonight here in Bakersfield. Kyle, if you get a chance to, if you have that foul on tape, we'd love to see it. If we have a dead ball. 
Holden over to Edler Davis. Damian Durham. He doesn't need to shoot. He hasn't made a three in a while. And that's not a good shot. Has it blocked just, and he throws it just, off of Damian Durham. What a play by Queen. It's a tie game and you're shooting a 34 footer. I just don't understand that. What a play by Trevor on Queen. Now they're going to check out possession, I think, here. Or shot clock. I don't know what. <coughs> we'll okay, see it right, right here. here. Okay, watch the foul line. This is where we have it at the foul line. It's where this foul is going to be called. And, and that's oh a foul. Oh, my gosh. Man, oh, man, let him play on. Oh, my gosh. 30, 45 seconds ago, we had blood down on the baseline. No call. But we had a foul called at the foul line. which had nothing to do with the play. So I mean, now we're tied at 68. There's three teams out here. One of them has to be better in the last minute. That's the official. So Durham, well, they're standing right here. Pulled the trigger on a long three, yeah. and it was blocked by Queen. Queen goes up, takes it, throws it off of Durham. That is one heck of a play late in this game. That one call against Charkel Joyner was nothing, and it tied the game with a foul shot. And now they're looking at the block, and it was a bad decision by Damian Durham. I don't, he wasn't down on the shot clock, was he? No. That's just a bad shot selection. Damien's got to be smarter than that with being a senior, tie game, and he's shooting a 30-footer. There was 11 on the shot clock when it went up. That's just that's just a really bad shot. And they have looked at it, and it is New Mexico State basketball, 68 to 68. And the Roadrunners right now, Greg, are going to have to dig awfully deep. They were looking to see after the block if the Aggies players' feet were out of bounds. When he saved the ball, we never looked at it. Need to stop here. Fans are on their feet. Here we go. Brown will walk it up. 120. Defense retreating here. Tied at 68. Overtime basketball. Brown has it up top. He wants to go to work on Jarkel Joyner. Jarkel's Look for a high pick. Quick fouls. Doesn't happen. Ball goes back in the hands of Harris. 12 on the shot clock. Something's going to have to happen. A minute left in regulation. Harris, Harris hard to the elbow. Stops, pulls up. That is going to be off. Rebounded by the Roadrunners. It's Ricky Holden that has it. We're tied at 68. There is a 25-second differential between regulation and the shot clock. I shoot this early. If you can, and you get two for one possessions. Coach Barn has one timeout. Joiner stops at the baseline, pulls up, doesn't now get it. Big out. rebound, Cartrell. Pull Cartrell pulls it out and gives it to Holden. Great idea. Now there's a six second differential between game and shot clock. Holden now. And Ricky wants a timeout. Well, Coach Barnes wants a timeout. Wow. So we're tied at 68. They stretch it into a full, but we'll stay here, Greg. Kyle, do we have any kind of angle on that Durham block where we can see the feet of the guy coming down or what happened over there? I don't know if we have a good angle, but if we do, I'd love to see it. If not, the officials looked at it. I'm sure they got the call right. I just want to see the great effort by the Aggies defender who, first of all, made a great block and then kept the ball alive and knocked it off Durham. Hey, partner. If your buddy called you right now and wanted to know what happened in this game right now, what would you tell him? If he called now, I'd say it's not over. You okay? <laughs> and he would say what? Then what would you tell him? What would you tell him uh, on a game of all, like this? I wouldn't answer the phone. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm dodging your question. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen. What would I tell him? Yeah, what would you say? Hey, what's happened? What happened in that game? What would you, how would you explain this game? I'd say a little bit of everything. I'd say the Roadrunners were thoroughly outplayed. At four points in 10 minutes. Yeah, thoroughly outplayed in the first half. Rallied at the end. Took control for the next 15 minutes and had a 10 point lead and went to sleep in the last 90 seconds. Here's your look, here's Greg. The, here's the block here, coming up. Don't know if uh, she was getting a good block. Yep, Peter up. Boy, that's tight to say whether. Did his foot land before he let go of the ball? Well, he threw it off of yeah, he did. Durham, but it came back and hit him, I think. So be that as it may, Greg. Well, they looked at it closely. We only got one quick look. What I can tell you, it was a long time ago. Yeah. 21.3 seconds left in overtime, 15 on the shot clock. Got to be smart with the inbounds pass. That's the start. 
McCants is out there. If he hedges, I run into him and do that Ed Bob thing and get a fifth foul on McCants. Not to mention, you go to the foul line. Brown's going to try to hang on to Joyner here. Nine on the shot clock. Jark Hill probably will pull it again, or will he kick it off? Barnes wants a play. Down. They set up a play. Joyner stops at the elbow, pulls up. Can't let him get a three. No threes. No threes. Four seconds left. Harris, the shot's no got to go up. Brown takes it, and it's Queen. And he's got it. No threes, and he's got it. Queen makes the bucket, but was Jarkel's a three or a two here? Coach Jan's right in front of us. Queen hit a buzzer beater. This is reminiscent of the when they hit a three to beat the runners. But was Joiner's a three or a two back here for Cal State? That's the big this question. Is, but this is reminiscent when New Mexico State came in here a few years back and hit a three, walked off at the buzzer, and the runners went to the tournament when they won in Vegas. The shot from Queen, definitely good for a 71-70. Rod Barnes is saying no. Rod Barnes is saying no. So everybody's checking on the screen. I think the question was, was Jarkel Joiner's a three or a two? Was Jarkel's well, a look, three or a two? I can't tell. What are they looking at here? I, I'm they're they, looking I, at the last shot, Here right? they want to make sure there was enough time, but was Jarkel's a three or a two? What, one, what was Jarkel? Game's over and what? The officials wow. have called this game over. And Mexico State wins it 71 to 70. And it was Queen who I told you when he came back into the game would be shooting a three. When you're winning by two and it's the final seconds, you've got to cover the three point line. You can't let them beat you, you can only let them tie you. Wow. Absolutely unbelievable game. Coach Jans looks at his crowd that traveled from New Mexico and says, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, he There's the off, shot. Oh, he got it off way in time. I still am questioning, was Jarkel's a three or a two down there? I think his was a two. Must have been, never a question there. So a devastating loss for the runners. Absolutely. And that's Jarkel's two. My vision, yeah, I was blocked, so he was well within the two. The, uh, the arc, but boy, that is a tough, tough, tough one to stomach right there. The Roadrunners will be back. We'll be here Saturday night, 7 p.m. They'll take UTRGV here. Big picture. Vegas is gonna be crazy, just like this. For Greg, I'm Vance, saying so long from the Icardo Center on the campus of CSU Bakersfield, where the final score, 71 to 70, New Mexico State wins.